Oh, swing off the mountain and walk over. Hi, <laughs> Gator is with Majestic Rider. So I'm on Trace. This is the Fox Trotter that's in training. And we both got bored in the arena, so we're out. And he's a pretty good guy. So we're going to do our arena workout here, and I figured I would share it with you. So just came out. We're just walking. I'm just trying to hold him in a straight line because he's wobbling a little bit. You can't believe how uh, crooked your horse can get. But you, you see very soon when you try to walk in a straight line and there's no walls or anything else holding you. So I just come out first and when I get on I sit there for a couple of minutes and then when I walk away, if they're hyper or something I might walk fast but otherwise I'm just trying to do a regular slow trail walk. And so what we're going to do, we're going to the right and we're going to go to the right around the whole entire barn. And then we'll go to the left around the entire barn. So we're just trying to walk and warm him up. I always try to make sure I have their attention. You'll see his ears are forward, so he's looking around. The dogs come out here sometimes and uh, bark at us, so he's looking for them. And when we get to this other side, this side always scares the horses because there's chickens and goats behind the trees. And then people working over there that they can't see. So when you know there's a scary spot, you just want to sit back, have your hands wide in case they spook, talk to your horse so you keep breathing. And if they're getting high-headed or nervous, half halt with one hand and then with the other, just alternating your hands. And that'll slide the bit to help bring the horse's head down. Why are you stopping, buddy? He's like, because I want to look. So, good boy. Now this round pen, for some reason, a lot of horses don't like this round pen either. It could be the color of it. And it used to have a big hole in it but now that's fixed but it's better but they still don't prefer going by it come on see he said it he did it just like i said go boy all right so now it's a little scary over here so i'm going to do a little leg yield to try to make sure his attention's on me so i'm just pushing him off my right leg and my hands are going to the left now i'm going to leg yield back the other way so. So you want to just give them little jobs to do, especially when it's a young horse. So you try to get them focused on you. And then I can feel his energy going up a little bit. So when we get back here, we'll change our direction and then go the other way. Okay. But we're not gating or anything. We're just trying to get the horse around the barn, going to the right and bending around our turns and making sure he's paying attention to us. Okay. And with young horses, you know, they, they're they great. Some have the best temperament. This horse has a really good temperament. But they're still young. They haven't seen everything. So certain things can scare them. So you always kind of want to be ready. You don't want to think this is an old plug and he's not going to do anything. Because they're young, they can. So in the beginning, until they're warmed up and you're sure they're being good, it's okay, buddy. There's glass cubes and all sorts of stuff. And there's a dog back there that always barks at us. And there's the goat. Um, but you just you want to be prepared because you just don't know again young horses can do stuff and it's expected it's just like a child you know a child's going to do something you like oh their hand you know they're going to run across the road or do something goofy so the horses even though they're good can do the same things so just remember young horses are like young children they can be great but some days they can be really bad and you are going to have your ups and downs if you have one that's just the way it goes uh, you can buy a young horse with a lot of training on it and they can be good but you still have to continue training it it's not finished and you're going to take training off so you might need the help of somebody to give you lessons or you know get on your horse once in a while and help it from being confused because a lot of times we can confuse them okay so i'm going to stop right here we're going to do a turn on the forehand He's not doing it so well because he's not paying attention, so I'm tapping him with my stick. But I'm not surprised. Now, I did lunge him ahead of time. I'm going to switch my stick to the inside. And uh, he was good. He did well over the poles, and I was working his canner over the poles, and that's getting nice and slow, but he naturally has talent to do that. So I know when he goes to canner, it's not going to be that hard. It's not like he's a pacey horse who can't figure out his legs. So he's just going to be able to canter and 
probably pretty slow once he's relaxed without a whole bunch of help. Okay, now the goat's up. So when you're on a young horse, you just be aware of stuff that has changed. We changed direction and now that thing is standing. And he might be fine, but he might not be fine. So I want to be ready. You want your reins short. You want to be looking at the goat to see what the goat's doing. But try to get your horse's attention off of the goat, even though you're looking at it to see what, what it's up to. Okay. So now we're just trying to get them all the way around the barn this direction. And let's stop and close this gate because that's good practice. So we're going all the way around this direction and then we'll put you back on in a minute. So there's a crow above the round pen. He's up in a tree. And now that's not being paranoid. It's just being aware of what my situation is. So that thing flies off. As I'm going through here, I want to make sure my range is short enough. I'm sitting back and I kind of keep his head up a little bit. Good boy. Because then he might shoot forward, he might shoot sideways. We just don't know what a young horse is going to do sometimes. And so you just want to be ready for it. But he did good. The bird didn't take off. But the other day we were riding and we came up on uh, like six or seven turkey hawks in a tree. And of course we stood there and waited to see if they would move and they wouldn't. And then right when we got up to the tree, they all took flight. Yeah, you could say it scared the horses a little bit. They did well, but... But we were all prepared because we knew that might happen. Yeah. All right, so he's doing very good. He's just looking at stuff that's normal. And you'll see as we go around, it's hard to see through the dog fencing. There's a horse on the other side. So I know he can't make it out because they see blurry kind of. And so he's going to turn his head to look, the tail swishing. But he's like, what is that? And I'm going to let him look. Now, a car just came up on the right, and that was just enough to kind of push him over the edge. He's like, whoa, 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 what's that? And again, that's normal. Okay. Now, he's looking, but not a whole bunch, so let's try and go by. Now, if it's not my horse is going to have to keep going by, a lot of times I'll go up and show him. I'm like, hey, look, it's a horse over there. You see that? And then let's just go down this little hill right here so we can see what's over here. Once they see what it is, a lot of them are okay. It's just they can't see what it is. So it's like a horror movie, you know. You can't see what's in the closet and you think it's a person. You open it up and you're like, oh, it's just a coat. I'm fine. Until Michael Myers jumps out and then you're not. But <laughs> just joking. So... He did well, so the next time around, I suspect that he probably won't look that much, okay? So now, we're going to do another turn on the forehand, not yet. Now, he just stopped. Now, he might have felt me change, but I wanted him to keep going. Okay, now we're stopping. Now, we're switching our stick over, another turn on the forehand. That way, if he doesn't move off my leg, I'm ready to tap him. Okay. So now we're going to start flat walking. We're going to try to flat walk for about five minutes. Now, we're not going to make any like circles out here really, but we're going to do our leg yielding and other stuff. So I'm going to give him some incentive to go. I'm squeezing with my legs. He's not really going. So I gave him a couple little taps with my stick. And he went a little too fast to start. He went more towards his fox trot. But I want him to know, well, I do want you to go. So don't pull on him right away. Let him fox trot a little bit and then just bring him back to their flat walk. So here we're at our flat walk. I was head shaking. I'm kind of moving back and forth in the saddle. But the fox trotters usually don't move as much back and forth in the saddle as you do with the uh, walking horses because they're usually more on the trotty side. So it's a little bit different feel even though it's still a flat walk. And remember, these guys, a lot of these horses can do running walks too. So if your flat walk's pretty darn fast, it could be a running walk. Remember, it's the same footfall, just different speed. Now, as we get up here, he's probably going to be looking. So I'm sitting back. We're going downhill a little bit. Good job. Now we're on the flat, so now we're going to pick up speed again. He's barefoot, and he's doing pretty good on these rocks, but that much might change as we start doing more work outside the arena. So we'll see, but they got good feet. We just leave them barefoot. Now there's a 
I felt a little soft bounce, so I know we're going up towards the fox trot, so I'm just going to slow it down. Chase gets his head chased. What's your name? Trace. Gets his head too low, so at times you'll see me just yank my hands up and then put them back down. What I'm trying to do is just get his head back up like it is right now because he tends to carry it too low, so we don't want to work a lot on head down with him because it's going to make him trottier. Okay, now the goat's back down. Keep an eye on that one. He's just either sleeping or we want to make sure the neighbor's goat's okay. So there's farmers out there. There's trucks. There's lots to look at. The horses, they might be running at times. There's a random cow somewhere around there. So even though we're outside of the arena, I'm still working. So now I'm going to leg yield them off my left leg. Just give them little jobs to do. Now leg yield them off my right leg. So that way, when the owners go to ride them, if they're on trail and they're having issues or he's not paying attention, they start asking him to leg yield and do things to get his attention back. He's already had practice doing that. He's like, oh yeah, that's right. I can pay attention. So now he's calmer than he was, and each time we go around, he's probably going to get calmer and lazier, because that's really who he is. He will go for you, but he's one you got to push a little bit, and these are great horses, okay? Because they'll slow down when you want, you don't have to hold them back usually, but they go when you want. You just, they just got to believe you. If your horse is not believing you, it's time to start, you know, carrying a stick or something to give him a little more incentive to go. Now there he slowed way down going up the hill and I'm like, you can walk a little faster up the hill. So those little hills are still gonna build his hindquarters. And so you'll see I'm on the flat. I'm not doing some crazy trail yet because he's not ready. He's not in shape for that. Even though he can do his gates well, he hasn't been on trail in a year. so. We want to slowly build him back up. We don't want to make him real sore or anything. So I'm, you see, I'm jerking his head up. And when it comes up, I just leave it alone. Now, each horse is different. Some naturally carry their heads lower because that's their confirmation. And that's kind of trace here where, you know, if I was on a walking horse, it might have its head a lot higher and that might be natural for that horse. So we want to understand what's natural for him, but then help him to get his gates and build them up. Now we're slowing down because we're going to go downhill, so I'm going to give little half halts. And he listens pretty well to those. Okay, now we want to speed back up. Trace is like, how about we take a break? Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep walking around. You might be able to see our shadow right there. If anything good comes up, I'll turn you back on, and otherwise I'll wait until we go the other direction to turn you back on. All right, so that's five minutes that direction, so now we're going to turn and go the other way. Trace is like, can we just look for a second? Sure, buddy. So I'm just letting them look. There's goats way over there. There's probably, you probably can't see them. They probably look like little white dots, right? But, um, I don't know, there's like 10 to 15 right over there, so that's good that he's seeing them. Now remember, your horse is much calmer. Come on, time to go back to work. If you've gotten them out first, so that's why I always, you know, he seemed quiet, but it's best to check because you don't know what's going to happen out here, what the neighbors are going to do. So it's best just to make sure they don't have any energy and kind of get them in the arena and move them and make sure if they're going to buck or something, they get it out in there, you know? Think of spooking them a little bit, chasing them, or doing that sending exercise quick if you're not sure, because that'll help get that extra energy off. Okay, so now we're back to the flat walk, and anytime I feel like there's a little bounce in it, then I just give a little half haul, because then that means I'm pushing him past his speed, and I'm taking him up towards a fox trot. Now, a confusing part is your fox trot and your step pace are going to feel very similar, especially if you're not used to feeling the gates, because they both have kind of a soft bounce. But we all talk about, oh, we don't want the step pace because it's not good for their back and it's not good for this other stuff. So he's watching uh, Charlie and the dogs. So that's right. So it's best to videotape it or take a lesson so you find out which one you're doing, because you don't want to keep working at the step pace. You'd either rather go to a running walk 
or convert the horse to the trotty side and get them to fox trot. So part of that, knowing how to help your horse and not training it for the wrong thing, is to make sure you know what it's doing. And so you want to do that by, if you can't tell from sitting up there, and it's hard for a lots of us to tell because it feels, again, very similar. So don't be embarrassed. Uh, you just put your phone up or you can put that little holder that I posted. You know, it's like $10. Don't come up with excuses. Come up with ways to help yourself. And just put the phone up and ride it back and forth. And if you need help, you know, you tell me and I'll give you a lesson if you're going to forward a lesson if you can't and you just have a question like is this a foxtrot or a step pace I'll tell you I just you know I'm not going to give details because I don't have time to do that for free or I won't be able to pay for my horses <laughs> or any food so we all got to make money but I'm happy to give you little things here and there to get you on your way okay all right so now we're half halting I stopped because he got going a little fast and I want to come down that hill now when you go around the barn, your five minutes, oops, that's a little too fast. Your five minutes goes much faster than when you're in the arena because it's smaller. Okay? So remember your flat walk, if you're feeling a little bounce to it, you're either doing a fox walk or um, a, uh, going towards your fox trot. So I just prefer to slow it down, make sure it's clear for the horse. But that's the nice thing about going around the barn or the pasture is the time goes back, the time goes faster. But you want to make sure now that you have different terrain out here that it goes up and down that you're helping your horse. Because remember when it goes down they get a little pacey. So with him that would be good for Trace because he's really on the trotty side. But for a pacey horse, you want to make sure you slow down where all those places it kind of goes downhill, even if it's a step or two. That can make that horse go into a pace. And you don't want to pick up any speed until you feel that that horse is really clearly walking with its legs separated. So he noticed the goat's gone. Where'd he go? Let's see, it was just that little thing like, what? And most people would be like, what's he spooking at? Well, I knew because I saw the goat there the whole time. And then I just looked and the goat's not there anymore. Lots of us, you know, the horses do stuff and we're like, he spooked at nothing. Oh, he spooked at something. It's just something you didn't see or hear or notice. That's all. Okay, so still at the flat walk. He's starting to speed up a little bit. So I just half halted. Don't buy all our favorite chickens and roosters. Get his head up. And again, my reins are short because I'm I'm not pulling on him. They're here for guidance and they gotta be short enough that if something happens, I can guide him pretty quickly and I'm not scrambling to do things. Uh, that's a lot of reason, you know, people get bucked off is they got the big loopy rein, the way a horse bucks is they bring their head down. So if they can't get their head down or they can't get it down as far, they can't buck as hard. So it helps you. So it's better to have a little bit short rein. And then once you're sure they're calm and they're not doing anything and your friends aren't going to do anything idiotic to try to kill you, then go looser. But don't start out with a loose rein. And if your friends are cantering hills, don't be on a loose rein because that's always when they take off and then the horse puts its head down and goes, hey, wait for me, I got to get this person off and I'll catch up. And they buck you off and they catch up to the other horses. So when Trace is flat walking, he does get a little bit lazier out here. He says, he, let's either fox trot or walk real slow. So my goal will just be to get that a little bit more consistent. Now I'm going to half halt just a little because going downhill again will help him to swing a little bit more, which will help. Okay, now it's been five minutes. See, went by quick. So we're going to do another turn on the forehand. So out here where he has no walls, he doesn't do it as well. So that's why you got to practice this. Cause, so when you need it on trail, it'll be good. Right now it's not very good. Okay, I'm going to give him a break for a minute and then we'll put you back on. So, Trace is bored. He wants to eat my foot. That's a baby horse thing. And uh, so that tells me, huh, you're bored. 
I think the break's over. So now we're going to speed up to our fox trot. So we go through the flat walk and then add a little bit more speed. Now we're on hard ground now, so that should help. Remember when they have a uh, deep footing, it makes them trottier. But as we go around this barn faster, brings up the energy so they can spook quicker. So you got to be aware of that. Now keep those reins short and bring his head up because he just got a little bit more trotty. And we want a soft bounce. We don't want a hard bounce because then we might as well have a trotting horse and we might as well post. So I like the fox trot to be comfortable and I don't want any suspension. So we lost a little bit. Now we're going to go downhill. We're going to try and see if we can keep our speed. Because again, it should pick up the speed a little bit for us. Good job. But it won't make him trotty. It'll make him more lateral. So that might help me to get his fox trot a little bit faster. Now we're going to try and do this for five minutes, but I don't know if he'll be able to keep it up, but we'll see. And this is good practice going by your other horses. You know, if he was bad here, say he wanted to stop with those horses, oh, I would let him stop. Then I would side pass them or do turn on the forehand, turn on the haunches. I'd give him a whole bunch of horrible stuff to do by his friends. And then it would get those things better. But then it would also make him not want to go to his friends. So it's good to ride it around your barn or ride away from your barn and back to your barn. There we tripped. And he's not a trippy horse, but he just hit a little gully. And that's a good thing riding around here. It teaches him, hey, pay attention to the terrain because I'm not slowing down. You got to pay attention to your feet. I'm just steering. You do that part. But we did lots of poles in the arena to help with his proprioception. So you prepare them, but then you got to practice. You can watch all my videos that you want. It won't fix everything. You either have to try it and then be willing to get critique to get better or critique yourself and videotape it. But the only way to get going with your horse is practice. You got to do it. Just watching videos and reading articles is great, but it won't get you there. It's just like when somebody teaches you on the computer. They'll show you what to do and you're like, oh, that's easy. And then they leave and you're like, what the hell did they do? I have no idea what I'm doing. That's why you want to try. Now he's flat walking, so I'm tapping him with my stick. I told you he was probably going to wear out faster. So. Now I'm using my leg when I need and when he's slowing down, I'm tapping him with my stick. But I am not pushing pressure on him the whole time. My legs are just sitting against his side so he feels them and he knows to keep going. That's how I want them to go. So his head went a little low there. Now he slowed down as I pulled up. So then I asked him to go with my leg and he didn't go. So then I went to tapping with the stick. The quicker you are with your timing and what the horse is doing, the quicker they're going to learn what to do. So again, we're going downhill here, but I'm going to keep my speed. Good job, Trace. So as we went down that, he naturally pushed back on his back end and got underneath himself. Okay, that's hard. But he's like, I'm natural at this. I got good information. I got good breeding gait. You try anything you want. I'm going to be able to do it. Got one minute left. So we don't, even if I'm timing this, I don't want to stop by their friend. So even if my alarm goes off, I'm not going to stop here. I want to keep going. And he was a little kind of spooky up by this goat, so that would be a good place for me to stop. Good boy. Good. Now let's practice a couple backups. Because you want to make sure your horse is going to back up on the trail. Good job. Right? Let's try it again. Then we'll give you a little break. Oh, good oh boy. So he has a pretty good stop on him. So he's pulling a little bit as I'm backing up. So I just hold a little pressure and then add my leg. I don't use a lot of hand when I back them up. And then when they're backing up good and they're not pulling on the bit, that's when I give them a break. All right, we're going to give them a little break, then go the other way. Okay, go. so we're going to do another turn on the forehand because remember I said that wasn't very good. So no reason to go to my turn on the haunches. And today's our first day doing this, so. 
Oh, Trace, that was really crappy. <laughs> He's like, thank you very much. But that's okay. This is the first time. All right. Now we're going to foxtrot this direction. Now he's going a little slow, like he doesn't want to go, so I just tapped him three times with my stick. It's not hard, it's just like me poking you in the shoulder, like, hey, come on, let's go. So now we're going to go forward, some more leg, until I feel that soft bounce in the saddle. And I try to make sure his head doesn't get too low. Now it's just a little bouncy for me, so I'm just going to slow it down a little bit. I'm like, okay, this direction, you're a little bouncier. Don't go for speed, go for the football. And you won't regret it. But you go for speed, you're going to regret it in time because your horse won't be as smooth. Get the football, then build the strength. Now it's going uphill. So I'm going to push him a little bit, get him engaged his back end. So again, your foxtrot will have a soft bounce. It's a very stable gait. Doesn't mean they can't trip or anything. They still can. But since it's a diagonal gait, hey, we just made the rocks hit the truck. Um, since it's a diagonal gait, if they trip or something, they usually catch themselves better than if they're uh, doing a lateral gait or they're more on the pacey side. Okay? It's just the way their brain's wired. I tell people lots of times they're non-gated trainers telling them no drop the reins if the horse trips and you know lean back and the horse will catch himself and I go here we're going downhill Whee! that's fun uh I know uh, that doesn't work in gated horse you do that and they might just tumble over because they're different they have different chains and the way they're wired is different so a lot of them you got to hold those reins and let that horse push against it and lean back as far as you can and shove your feet back and get all your weight back to help that horse get up because if you got those loose floppy reins they trip they already got like 80 percent of their weight on their front end so they're just going to go over you don't want that to happen so i know some of those trainers don't believe me but i've been doing this forever had a lot of them trip and then they end up being fine but i show them what to do the horse and then i show the owner what to do I don't know if you can see his fox trotting down there. It's uneven terrain, rocks sticking up. This is how you get your horse good, is riding him over these things. But when I'm riding him over it at speed, he's got to pay more attention. If he's not paying attention, any of these things could make them trip. So, you know, give your horse jobs to do. Every, so all the horses are different. So some, you know, are lazier. And they just drag their feet just like some people are lazy and clumsy so you got to get after them like hey pick your feet up hey do this move over that way and they can be great horses but if you don't want to do that then that lazy horse is probably not for you same thing if the horse is speedy they might be too quick and you got to work on calming them down so get what works for you but many of the trippy ones can be quite good if you ride them correctly but you got to help them and you got to make sure everything else is okay with them and they don't have other issues. Okay, so we're going uphill. That makes them trottier. So we want to be careful he doesn't go too fast. He's like, I'm getting tired, gay. Okay? I think we got a minute or two left, Trace. So you'll see as we're going around, he's gotten better with this horse that's behind that weird fencing and all this stuff going around. I mean, he wasn't real spooky anyhow, but he was looking at stuff. But now he's like, oh, I guess I'm just in an arena. It's just a bigger one. That's what you want them to do. And that's what you want them to do on trail. So, you know, my job with him was to get him ridden again, get him going, work on his gates. Then we want to get trail miles on him. But I like doing it in stages. Do the arena, get that stuff done so he knows what I want. Then do it around the, there's a little bouncy spot. Then do it around the barn. Once he can do it around the barn really well, then I know it's time to go out further. Then I'll do a short trail. Then I'll add more and more trails and then they'll get harder and steeper. But I don't want to take a horse that's out of shape, doesn't know what he's doing, on a four hour trail ride, ride the heck out of him. And it, you know, if he makes it through it, well, there you go. That's not, that's not how I like doing stuff. I like building them up, helping them, showing them what to do. So they really know what their job is and then they can help their owners. Okay? But this is great practice. But 
but remember with young horses it takes years and years before it's finished even when he's done with my training and they're working on and he's great he's still got years and years to go to be a great horse he goats back he's like i don't care about the goat i just want some air so remember, young horse, they're going to make mistakes. It's just what they are, just like we are when we're young. We make mistakes. Even though we're going to school, we flunk tests. We don't do our homework. We don't pay attention in class. It's the same with the horse. They don't pay attention to what's going on trail. Then something jumps out and scares them. They don't pay attention. They trip. They fall down. So... His head's getting too low, but by his head keep going low, I know he's getting tired. Okay? So if I was out on trail, I had two hours to go, and I'm like, oh, this horse is putting his head down. You know what's going to happen next? If he's getting really tired, he's going to drag his feet, so he might start tripping. So that would be a good time for you to get off the horse, give it a break, have a picnic. He ignored me there, so you can hear me hitting him harder. Um, Give him a picnic and get off him for 20 minutes. Loosen up his girth, let him catch his air. Because by pushing them when they're really tired and then letting them carry their head down low like that, you're setting them up to trip. Because they're tired and then they're not paying any attention. Okay, so now we're just gonna walk. He's like, oh my God, thank God. See how he really just came back to slow? Now he wants to stop because he's tired and he's right at the dog pen that scared him the other day, but not bad, okay? So, what I want to do here, the dogs aren't here, I'm going to try some side passing here because you want to make sure you turn on the forehand, your side pass, your turn on the haunches. You can do it wherever you need it, just not in the arena. Now, he still keeps trying to bite my foot. So even though you're like, oh, it's cute, it's just little baby stuff, I'm going to bop him in the nose because if a horse bites your foot and it gets its mouth stuck in the stirrup, which I've had happen, uh, you, the horse can flip over because they'll panic. So they get their teeth through. They can't get themselves back out. You're on their back. You can't get off because you, now your foot's stuck in the stirrup with it. So if they do that, you either just bump them with your foot or tap them with your stick or say no. But you want to make sure you don't let them create a habit like that. All right. So now let's try to side pass. So he could side pass in the arena, but not that great. So that's one step. So I always just start with one step. Like, do you understand what I'm saying? And he's like, yeah, I got it. Now I'm going to go for two steps. Now, if their back end doesn't go with their front end, I use my dressage whip to help that back end catch up. So that's helpful to help me guide him. Like, no, I don't want just your front end. I want your back end also to go over. And I want to get this really good because if we have to open up gates, which we'll work on too, then I'm all set up for it. Now we're going to go the other way. So the first time I go the other way, a lot of horses can get confused. But Trace is like, not me like I'm a smarty pants. Now I wish all the horses that came in training were like this. Bred well, smart, had some training on them. Makes my job much easier. But they're usually not. And then, you know, as we're training, people expect it to be a really finished horse in a couple of months. I can put a lot of training on, but it takes years and years. So even once they have that training, now he's crooked. They need practice. They need someone to practice that with so they get better at. Okay. So that's it. We're not going to canter out here. That was a hard workout for him. And uh, he did really well. So that's it for today. So hopefully that helped you with some of you uh, fox trotters or trippy horses or young horses. Just to give you some guidance on uh, what to do and what to work on.